了看电影的时间喽，我是主持人陈巧玲。今天的电影娱乐报要介绍的呢，就是这一部青春搞笑喜剧《Love Simon》，亲爱的初恋。故事呢是改编自畅销小说，描述有一位十七岁的高中男生 Simon 面对到底要不要出柜这个关卡，他内心的挣扎和成长过程。不过呢，这全片哦没有严肃议题的沉重，反而是更贴近生活的悸动。电影被誉为是年度最暖心的校园剧，在全美上映后好评不断，在 m d b 更是夺下了八点一的高分。到底这个故事会怎么发展呢？就跟着我们一起来了解吧。Hey, how was the party? Aces. <laughs> he's wearing a woman's sweater, and he's drunk. Yeah, we're good parents. Right. My name's Simon. I'm just like you. I have a normal family, amazing friends, typical high school. You know, there's no texting in the halls, dude. Come on, I can't have all my students tendering it up. Right. That's my department. <laughs> a lot of my life is great, except I have one huge ass secret. Hey. Have you seen the new post about the closeted gay kid at school? Who do you think it is? <sighs> Dear Blue. I'm just like you. Nobody knows I'm gay. Dear Simon, it's nice to know there's another guy at school with the same secret. When did you first realize? Dear Blue, it was a bunch of little things, like my first girlfriend. I think I'm falling in love with you. Be right back. Wasn't my proudest moment. Simon, have you told anyone? No, Blue, I haven't told anyone. Announcing who you are to the world is pretty terrifying. Abby's the hottest girl. Just not really my type. Mm. Not because she's black. I love black women. I just, I just love all women. Dear Blue, it doesn't seem fair that only gay people have to come out. Why is straight the default? I have something I need to tell you. I'm straight. I like girls. You trying to kill me? I like men. Oh God, help me, Jesus! Sai, look at your computer. Someone leaked your emails on the school blog. I'm sorry, Simon. I can't do this anymore. I'm supposed to be the one that decides when and how and who knows and how I get to say it. That's supposed to be my thing. I think I'm destined to care so much about one person it nearly kills me. Me too. It's like I can feel you holding your breath. You are still you, Simon. Have you ever been in love? I don't know. I think so. You're blue. I might not know your name or what you look like. I want to find you. I'm done living in a world where I don't get to be who I am. Did you date me because you think I look like a guy? No, I actually broke up with you because you don't look like a guy. Oh, okay. Thanks. Welcome. What excited me about the project is the fact that this story has not been told before. Um, in this setting, in high school, in a sort of coming of age film. And I feel like it was past due and I wanted to be part of the team that helped tell it. He's, you know, he's just trying to find himself in the world of uh, high school, which um, is hard enough as it is. And then he has to, all of this is compounded by the fact that he's struggling with his sexuality. And that's, um, uh, I think also where a lot of the comedy comes from because he has, uh, he's, he's able to kind of turn situations that might seem bleak to some and, and find the, the humor in it, which is uh, something that I find to be very appealing. I loved it as a book, and then I loved it even more uh, when Isaac and Elizabeth uh, had written the script. Uh, I sort of was sitting around one Saturday and someone had told me they were making this movie and I had known about it from the book and I read the book, I read the script and really fell in love with the story right away. It was just, it was sort of everything that, it reminded me so much of being in high school, of the movies I loved when I was in high school uh, and it just captured a, a certain spirit and I, I thought when I put it down I have to be a part of this. I think one of the things Becky captured in the book that was so special and I think the writers have sort of done the same thing and then the actors, everybody sort of amplified it along the way is an authenticity of the voice to the voices. Uh, I think that's one of the hardest things to sort of capture about young people is just like what do they sound like, what do they talk like, how do they refer to each other and how can it be sort of of the moment but still, you know, timeless in a way and, and I think she she always had the, the spirit of that, and I think throughout, I've just tried to um, keep that spirit alive and, and to keep, make the, you know, the film, hopefully, just as, as resonant as the book is in that regard.
The love story that Simon has with Blue, I think, is really uh, evocative and, and emotional for anyone who's ever been in love or fallen in love. I think there's an element about it that's so wonderful and that we it's easier sometimes to reveal ourselves to a total stranger, you know, and to say who we are uh, than it is to someone who's like actively in our life. So you have the whole element of just them introducing themselves to one another. And then you have the anxiety and the fear of if, if Simon feels like the possibility of losing this person that he's come to, who he doesn't even know, who he's come to sort of be in love with. And, and if those letters get outed and he loses this person in any way, would his whole life sort of fall apart? And then there's the ultimate reveal of who this person is and just the driving extra element of the film of this plot of, is it you? Is it you? You know, are you the one writing me the letters? Uh, and, and I think that's, uh, it's, that was always such a, a wonderful kind of mystery to the movie. I've been thinking about why I haven't come out yet. Maybe it's because it doesn't seem fair that only gay people have to come out. Why is straight the default? I have something I need to tell you. Mom, there's something I have to tell you. Can, can we talk? Yeah. I'm straight. I'm straight. I'm sorry, Mom. It's true. I like girls. <coughs> I like men. You get that from your dad, is that? I'm in love with Nick. Mm. I feel like I've been raising a stranger. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You yeah. have. I'm heterosexual. Oh, God. Help me, Jesus, please. So he's part of this great family, and he has a great group of friends at school, but there's something lonely in him, and it is that he has this secret. He's gay, and he hasn't shared it with the people closest to him. So it's just Simon's journey toward um, discovering what it means to own something so um, central to who you are, to the people who love you the most. The truth will set you free, but there is a moment where everyone has to react to the truth. And that is so overwhelming, the fear of that moment, that it keeps people from relaxing into who they can be. And I think that's especially true for, you know, lesbian, gay, queer, transgender kids who are realizing, you know, I, I eventually I'm going to have to talk to people around me about something that I know to be true about myself. But the pressure of that and the anticipation of it and the, 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 the imagined explosion that that could, you know, that, that could happen from something like saying that out loud um, is pretty intense, I would think. The movie's really about acceptance and tolerance and love, and, and, uh, and it's funny. I really liked that it. it was funny. It wasn't too heavy-handed. It's about a, you know, a, a high school kid who's gay uh, and is terrified about coming out because of what it'll do to his family and how it'll affect all his friends at school. And uh, I mean, ultimately, it, you know, it, that, could, that could be a really sort of heavy-handed movie. Uh, but it's 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 a funny sort of light take on it, which I thought was refreshing. This guy has no idea. He has no idea that his son is gay. In fact, he you know he he's always making like little jokes about women and oh that guy's obviously gay and you know and so when he finds out his own son is gay, he's you know totally ashamed that he you know said some of the things he did, but also found you know it, that it doesn't really matter you know and you, you're still my kid and I love you no matter what and I wouldn't change anything about you. I'm just like you, except I have one huge secret. What is it? Simon's part of this great family, but he has this secret. He's gay, and he hasn't shared it with the people closest to him. Everything you get to be more you than you've been in a very long time. It's such an important message to hear that you've got to be true to yourself. It made me really think about my son. You just love him no matter what. How was the party? Basis. He's drunk. Well, he didn't drive drunk and he's home before curfew, so. We're good parents. Yeah, we're good parents. I think sometimes in, in teen romantic comedies, you know, they kind of go to this place of the parents having to be extra quirky or characters that kind of like are goofy in some way. I think it was really vital for this film uh, in both the casting of, of Josh and Jen and, you know, obviously that they feel like a real family and that they feel like this, this and also that they feel like this couple that Simon is always measuring his own life against because he's sitting there at 16 and 17 and feeling like, you know, my parents met in high school. Look at them, they're perfect. They're this like all American, adorable couple. And, and it's even that much more pressure, I think, for Simon to feel as though uh, he needs a perfect love story. 
one of the reasons I chose to do the movie was, and I don't know why, but there just still hasn't been. It's 2018, and there's not, you know, a major studio film about a gay high schooler. And it's, you know, I obviously hope that there'll be dozens more, and they'll cover terrain that we didn't get to cover with this, and they'll be more specific and totally their other ways. But someone at some point had to be first through the door, you know? And I remember being in high school and watching these movies and having to imagine sort of, you know, secondary and tertiary characters that might be gay uh, and have to do all that work rather than just necessarily enjoy the film, you know? And it's, I think, I think everyone uh, that made the film from the cast to the production people to the, you know, the studio, uh, to the producers, to everyone even in, in post and, and subsequently, you know, I think is aware in some capacity that we're putting something there that just wasn't there before. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think hopefully, again, it will be, there'll be many more after it. Uh, but, yeah, that was definitely a, a part of wanting to do it. And when I read that script and when I read the book and I got to the end, I found myself crying. And not just because it was sad or whatever, but because I felt like I felt Simon's sense of, of liberation and being himself and getting to not waiting till after to college or till he was 24 or 25, you know, but now realizing that I only have today and today I'm going to start by just being everything I am and I think uh, and that that will help me find who I'm supposed to be and help me find uh, people I'm supposed to enjoy life with and fall in love with and and not by pretending to be something I'm not but by actually being everything I am. Hua 男主角则请来尼克罗宾森饰演情窦初开的少年他帅气的脸庞及真诚的演技让影迷对他是印象极深而这一次挑战扮演男同志演技是更加细腻在片中有一幕和母亲谈心的桥段更是令人动容精彩
I found that to be really awkward and and uh, added a lot of sort of uh, tension to the family dynamic, which was fun because you know there's no ill will. He just he's just a little awkward. You know, I remember going through high school and and. It's, it was a struggle. It was some of my least favorite years because I was so awkward and because, you know, you're, you're, you're dealing with the hormones and you're dealing with the clicks and you're trying to, you know, you're, you're, you're in that transition between child and adult and it's just an awkward phase for everybody. So I think what makes this a, a relatable and universal story is that he's going through what everybody else is going through except that he happens to be gay. And he has his own dynamic with each other actor in the film as an actor, as the character really does with each of the characters. And so you'd feel the tone of the set change when he was in a scene with Martin, or you'd feel the tone of a set, the set change again when he's in a scene with Leah, you know, or he's in a scene with his mom and dad. And he kind of just really was Simon in those moments. And, and it lets the movie feel like it's a slightly different, you know, film, but you're guided so much by that person. You know, uh, you can you can sort of give them a little bit of guidance, but they're really taking you to those places. Greg, uh, he approached. He I talked to Greg like I don't know, maybe six months before we started this thing, and he's been awesome this whole time. And I couldn't imagine somebody better to actually tell this story. He was the perfect choice for this. He's a huge reason that it, that I was so excited to be a part of the film. Uh, Greg and I sat down a couple of months ago in LA to first talk about the movie and I said, you know, here's some thoughts I have about the script and he went back and wrote these amazing scenes to um, fill in the blanks that I felt like were kind of glaring for Emily and, and for the movie in, in general. And um, instead of saying, oh, you just want more to do or you just want a big juicy scene, he just said, I actually really see the need for that and was so collaborative and so fantastic. And he's one of those directors who seems completely, you can't, you can't mess with his zen. He's a master of zen. And he's, um, he's got it all under control. This is very personal for him, but he's not precious about it. I'm just like you. For the most part, my life is totally normal. My dad was the annoyingly handsome quarterback who married the hot valedictorian. And no, they didn't peak in high school. I have a sister I actually like, not that I'd ever tell her that. And last year, in 200 episodes of Chop to Go, she decided she wanted to be a chef. And then there's my friends. Two of them I've known since pretty much the beginning of time, or at least kindergarten. One of them I just met a few months ago, but it feels like I've known her forever. We do everything friends do. We drink way too much iced coffee, we watch bad 90s movies, and hang out at Waffle House dreaming of college and gorging on carbs. So, like I said, I'm just like you. I have a totally, perfectly normal life. <laughs> Except I have one huge ass secret. I think it's such an endearing story, but it's also done so in a way where it feels truthful and real. And it, it actually kind of made me think about my own high school experiences. And you know, I yeah, personally, I'm actually such a huge fan of the book. Um, I actually, after reading it, I Instagrammed Becky Albertelli and totally like fangirled and was just like, I love your book. I'm in your movie. I'm sorry, I'll leave now. But um, you know, I you know, I think the reason maybe why I loved it so much is you know, a lot of the reasons why I like it also maybe some of the reasons why a lot of other people like it, whereas it's, it, it just feels like it, it, it respects the intellect of its audience. It doesn't feel like cheesy or unrealistic. And it's just a really beautiful story about love. We don't see like gay teenage characters. We don't see those coming of age stories of, of, people who are bi or people who are pansexual or transgender. They, they, they're not represented in our media and therefore we don't know a lot about it and therefore it feels weird to be that. And I think it takes a lot of strength and a lot of courage to come out. Um, and, I, and I hope that this film can kind of help normalize the fact that being gay is normal and fine and not weird and natural. And yeah, it just, yeah. <laughs> I know I remember.
Hey guys! Hey! Hey! Come talk to us! How was the party? It was really fun. Was it? Yeah. Aces. Huh. Huh. <laughs> uh, well, thanks for letting me stay over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've been staying over 10 years. It's, um, you don't have to thank us. Oh, yeah, thanks. John Lennon was wearing a woman's sweater, mm. and he's drunk. Definitely. So how do we feel about well, that? Well, he, he didn't drive drunk, and he's home before curfew, so. Good. That's what I thought we thought. Yeah, that's what we think, right? Yeah, we're good parents. Yeah, we're good parents. Right? I loved the way that they approached being young and still discovering your sexuality and still coming into your own within that. And um, I loved how they, how they just made it so easy. You know, my character, Abby, when they're like, oh, did you hear that someone at school is gay? And she's like, <laughs> who cares? Because it doesn't matter. And I think that the more and more that we show that in films and the more and more that we show that through art, the more and more we're able to accept people for every walk of life, for every, you know, everything that's different about them. Simon sees a post on Creek Secrets uh, about a guy who's in the closet but who's afraid to come out, and that resonates with him so much because it's not that he's afraid to come out, it's just that he doesn't want to. And there's someone out there who's kind of living in fear, and that, that fear is, is very real. Um, and I think it really just resonates with him. Hey, Sai. Yeah? How long have you known? I was around 13. Four years, four years of eating dinner together, four years of going to movies together. I'm sorry. I shouldn't no. have missed it. Hey, no, Ted. All those stupid jokes. I know you didn't mean them. I just want you to know that I love you. I wouldn't change anything about you. Hey, stop crying. I'm trying. Oh, I saw a video from mom coming. Good. I don't know how to export it. Can you help me with that? Yeah. Let's go. Hey, I thought maybe we could sign up for Grinder together. You don't know what Grinder is, do you? It's Facebook for gay people. Not what it is. I really hope when people. Uh, finish the movie that they it both reminds them of their own you know experience and reminds them of high school and reminds them of the of friendships that they had then and the family that they grew up with and that that moment in their life uh, and that it's the kind of film that they'll want to watch again and again through the years because that's sort of how they have that particular emotional experience you know that it will it will sit with them and stay with them and, and be the kind of movie that they revisit the way that they would a yearbook, you know, an old high school yearbook. 不分男生女生，跨越歧视，每个人呢其实都值得一场美好的爱情。新片《亲爱的初恋》就推荐给大家喽。那我是巧玲，电娱乐宝，我们下次再见，拜拜。<音樂>